Good morning, Ken. I'm gonna make some breakfast and get the workday started. Hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. I completely forgot to film yesterday, even though I knew I was going to do this entire week in my life. Pretty much caught up on all of my emails yesterday because I took a week off last week to help shelter volunteers to train at the animal shelter I volunteer at. So I was really behind on a lot of things. Caught up on the email yesterday. I did film a reel and published it. This week I have a couple of meetings on my agenda. Mostly for today it's going to be prep. So tomorrow I'm interviewing Nick Seng, the author of A Data Science Interview and the founder of Data Lemur. On my new podcast I'll be talking about his transition, quitting his photo time job as a software engineer from Facebook and then SafeGraph to writing a book, building his own company as well as building a LinkedIn audience. The first season of my podcast is going to be live by the end of the year and I'm really excited for this podcast because it's going to be all about options. The options that you have outside of your traditional nine to five, how other people have done it, where they are now, do they regret it? Did they end up going back to a nine to five life? I have a really good guest lineup, so I'm really excited about that. Today's Tuesday, that means I need to write another issue of my newsletter on data. I haven't decided on a topic yet. I do enjoy writing a lot, but sometimes I have writer's block or I don't really know um, the topic that I'm going to be writing about. So it is a little hard at times, but I just force myself to sit down, just do it, just write it. So that's what I'm going to do this morning, write my newsletter, publish my newsletter. I have a workout class at 2 p.m. mostly like in yoga, so a lot of stretching. I feel like I really need that because I've been having a lot of sports injury issues from playing a lot of tennis. I think that's it. Yeah. One last thing is my editor sent me final draft of the LinkedIn learning vlog. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out. I'll link it right here. I'm just going to go through it one more time and make sure that everything is good to go. Just sent out an email to Nick, who I will be interviewing tomorrow. So it's currently 12.40. I am going to make lunch now and rest a little bit. Take a break before my yoga class. For lunch today on the menu, it's going to be noodle soup. So I got these takeout noodle yesterday after tennis. I picked them up from the restaurant and they give us so much broth that I was able to save half of it for another meal today. Noodle soup is my comfort food. I know it's not super healthy but it's quick and easy and makes me feel like home growing up these are the ingredients for my soup it's not really my typical soup i just found whatever is in my fridge at the moment i usually put also a green cabbage or like a bok choy in my soup as an additional veggie for today these will do it's just so gloomy outside and it's been raining all day. It feels like the perfect weather for a warm bowl of noodle soup. I feel like it's such an Asian thing to do to cook with your utensils and then eat with the same utensil. And the secret to cooking tomatoes is adding sugar. I don't know why, but I've always been told to add sugar to tomatoes by like my Asian relatives. I think it brings out acidity in the tomatoes to make it more flavorful and more juicy. I just lost my chopsticks over here. I'll add a little bit of water as well for added color. And some protein. I like to put my corn straight into the bowl so that it doesn't get overcooked. Some vinegar, sesame oil. 
if you're wondering why I have this ginormous white blanket on my couch, it's because my cat is under there. We washed and dried it once and just put it on the couch temporarily. She went right under and ever since we just couldn't take it away from her. She really enjoyed being under the cover and now she has a permanent spot on the couch. because I wanted to go to a work coffee shop after my workout. I brought my laptop and my bag because I wanted to stay out after my workout to go to a coffee shop and get some work done. But ultimately, I decided that I, <laughs> that I wanted a bubble tea instead. I didn't want any coffee. So I brought everything back home with me. I feel a little bit overwhelmed with the amount of work that I have to do. What I find really useful is planning when I feel overwhelmed um, and figure out why I feel the way I feel. Today in particular, I feel like I have so many moving pieces from different projects going on that I'm storing everything in my head right now and I need to do a brain dump on paper so that I can safely forget about them and have the brain space for the task at hand. That's why I have here a weekly planner that I'm going to use to write down all of the things that I still have to do this week. shooting with Nick Sang for the podcast episode. I'm trying to do eight episodes for season one together. So film them all before they all go live together in December or January of next year. And so far, Nick is my second guest. I'm feeling really grateful to have such powerhouses joining my podcast at launch. And I contributed all to just really social media, having an online presence and personal brand. Last time I filmed a in-person podcast podcast in San Francisco with the founder of Julius AI. That one was in person and the, this one with Nick is my first one that I'm filming online. This is really just a way for me personally to meet interesting people, to expand my network while being able to share that knowledge with everybody else as well because even when I was back in school, I was very big on sort of one-on-one -on -one networking and cold emailing people in positions that I would like to be and just have coffee chat with them. But I think some of these conversations, some of the insights that people share shared with me are so beneficial or would be so beneficial to so many of you as well. And that's basically the whole point of starting this podcast. I'm very excited about the podcast coming out and I hope you are too. I'll make sure to keep you all updated on my Instagram and YouTube and LinkedIn. And now let's go get some lunch. I never dress up when I'm working from home. I did today because I wanted to look consistent on my podcast among different episodes. And I know the first one I filmed in person, so it was like super formal. Um, and I thought I would just put on these pants just to feel a bit more put together, but I feel great. I should do this more often, <laughs> but I definitely need also to get these pants tailored so it stays up.
probably so dangerous to do that over my laptop. Made another coffee and I'm ready to get it back into the afternoon. Big stack of work. I'm still trying to figure out the tutorials would do better or interview concept explanation do better in short form videos. I have some thinking to do on what kind of videos I want to post next for my Instagram over the next two to three weeks. Uh, so some strategy there. I have a resume review to do as well. Research, film and edit two short form videos and then plan my long form streamlit coding series videos on YouTube. I also do want to finish up just going through the podcast that I had this morning. I'm adding the intro post production as in I would like introduce the person and then talk about what we talk about in the podcast episode. So I want to summarize what we talked about and write the script for for what I have to do at the beginning. And tonight, my boyfriend is going to Chinese class. He does it every Wednesday. Afterwards, we're gonna meet at my friend's place because today is Wednesday and the finale of Love is Blind is coming out. We're all gonna be having a little watch party together with some sushi. So I'm pretty excited about that. Just gotta get this chunk of work done and then I can relax and go watch Love is Blind. <laughs> I'm currently going through vlog footage for LinkedIn Learning in CapCat. So my editor already put the final footage together, but I want my parents or my family really to want to see what my life is like. It's hard for them to imagine and feel disconnected. So I'm in CapCat right now and it has this function where it will automatically generate the Chinese subtitle in addition to the English subtitle. but. I'm pretty sure they don't use ChatGPT for this because ChatGPT can do it so much better. I think they use Google Translate. And so I'm sitting here and I'm going through my footage of 25 minutes long and I'm actually editing the Chinese part of the translation subtitles because it's so bad. This is not going to be circulated on the internet at all, which is fine, but I still want my parents or my family to understand what I'm talking about because some of these things make no sense whatsoever. It's a bit of work, but I think it's something that's nice to do for my family if that's gonna make them feel closer to me and have a better understanding of what I do because I do a very terrible job of explaining it. it. I think it's mainly because I've never worked in a Chinese company like I came to North America when I was 14 so I don't really have the vocabulary of someone who would be working in tech working with data and it was really hard for me to explain to them exactly what I work on what I do and I hope this video with the Chinese subtitles can give them a glimpse of exactly what my travel was like on my business trip and what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. a few packages here that I would like to unpack with you guys. I have two sweaters from Banana Republic. It was on their friends and family super sale. So I got the same sweater but in different colors and different sizes because one of them is only available in one size. So I'm going to try them on, decide which one to return. And I also have a book coming from Amazon as a gift. Let's do it. I have this sweater in cream color. They're both in tall because I am 5'8", so a lot of times I prefer the tall sizing and it's 100% cotton. It's actually from Gap, not Banana Republic. And this is a medium tall. I really like the design of the collar. <laughs> okay. Hi. Hmm. Okay, I'm not a huge fan of the zipper. There we go. So I could wear it like this or open. It's mostly about sizing for me. I think black tend to look better on me. 100% cotton, so I think it's gonna shrink if I put it in the wash for the first time or if I ever forget and put it in the dryer. It's not too small. It definitely feels more fitted than the medium option, but it's not too small at all. I think ordering in a tall really helps, especially with the sleeve length. This is how it looks. What do you guys think? Next, we have a book. It's the Building LLMs for Production. 
by Louis Francois and Louis Peters. I've been eyeing this book since it came out because I'm actually building my own AI app that it's essentially just a wrapper over ChatGPT, but it's going to help people who are looking to break into data science a jump start on their data science portfolio. This is a super helpful book. I'm really excited to read it. And the author, Louis Francois, sent it to me. So grateful and I'm really excited to dive into it. And it looks very technical as well, which is just perfect when you're trying to build something that's technical. I love it. And Mocha is exploring my bags. You want to say bye? You want to say we're going to go work now? We're going to go work now. <laughs> so I'm planning on posting my YouTube video in about two hours. I'm just doing some finalization in terms of making sure the thumbnail is good to go and description and titles are SEO friendly and I have all the relevant links and tags in my description. I do also want to try out a few AI apps that can turn my long form videos into short form content that would allow me to post a clip of my YouTube video on Instagram and TikTok as well. I finished my thumbnail design for the YouTube video and I've literally been staring at it for, I don't know, 20 minutes at this point. I couldn't decide on two of them. This is option number one. This is option number two. I know they look pretty similar, but I couldn't decide which one is better. You know how YouTube now has built in A-B testing option where you can put in two different thumbnails and then it'll give you the video performance metrics. If you are in the field of data science, you know that each thumbnail is going to be pushed out to a random sample of audience. And I think this is something that's really cool that is now built into YouTube. So I'm going to try it out. If you upload video to YouTube, this is what you see on your YouTube studio page. You put in your title, your description, you can test and compare up to three different thumbnails. So now it's going to show it to different viewers. I think the most important metric for different thumbnails probably click through rate so that's what i will be looking for when the metric and results start rolling my video is not live and of course i'm using all of my backup accounts to give myself as much of a jump start as i can and i'm not ashamed of doing this i didn't really get this down earlier in the week but i'm now working on the podcast cover for my new podcast i feel like Canva makes design so much easier, but still, if you don't have an eye for it, uh, I don't know what, how I'm doing. So the way I'm getting my inspiration from is I'm looking at the podcast charts for like Canada, USA, UK, and I'm looking at how they are doing their podcast covers and trying to get some information from theirs. I feel like most just have like a solid background and with somebody's photo as well as the show's name. So that's what I'm trying to emulate, but like this is too corporate like i don't like it at all this is kind of what i'm leaning towards but i don't know if it's like the background is too plain this was the original background of my profile so what i did was i made the background color a little bit darkened so like it's less popping and then i did a background remover for my portrait here and i'm adding it back on top so that my portrait would pop this is the one that i'm leaning towards right now and i don't think it matters like that much especially at the beginning stage if you have better ideas or if you're a graphic designer specializing in this and you have some ideas i'm happy to provide you with footage we can talk about pricing and all that hit me up and let me know to the library to pick up a few books. Toronto honestly has such a good public library system. Honestly, I have nothing bad to say about them. They're super organized and sometimes there's a wait for the book, but it's totally worth it if you don't know if you want to buy a book yet and you just want to check it out. So I placed a couple of books on hold 
I have three available here that I picked up. Um, I think I placed an order for six of them. After filming the second episode of my podcast this week, I felt like there was so much room that I can still improve on in terms of being a better host. So these days I'm trying to listen to more podcasts that I like and I particularly listen to how the host is asking questions and how they're doing the transitions to keep the conversation going. Consequently is to have more substance and the way to do that is to read books. I have been so busy sometimes that I forget. You have to fill your cup first before you can give away to other people. And I haven't been filling my cups lately. I haven't been reading any books and been feeling a little empty inside. So these three books that I picked up are almost like business entrepreneur self-help books. This one is called Life Beyond Likes, Logging Off Your Screen and Into Your Life. It is about creating boundaries between between you and social media, the way you consume it, how you use it, and how to create a balance. My second book that I picked up just for fun is called Utopia for Realists. This book is super interesting because it's talking about a case for a universal basic income, open borders, and a 15-hour work week for all. The last book that was ready for me to pick up is called The Productivity Project by Chris Bailey. Like all cliche self-help books. It talks about how to become more productive at work and in every aspect of our lives. But I specifically like this book's approach because it's talking about how to manage your time, how to not only manage your time, but also manage your energy and your attention. I've come to realize this past year that time is actually not the most valuable resource. It's actually energy because energy is more finite than time in a sense that you have 24 hours in a day, but you're not going to feel your best and your most productive self for 24 hours a day. And just like how people say like you have eight hour work days, but you're not going to be productive throughout the day. You're going to have like little peaks of productivity and then valleys of productivity. So managing, being able to manage energy is actually more important in my opinion than being able to manage your time. Very excited to read this book as well. just finished playing tennis. I really got into tennis this year and I really wanted to keep it as a hobby, especially in the winter time when there's nothing to do in Toronto. Everybody's snowed in. It would be really nice to be in the bubble playing some tennis with friends. This week was a pretty typical week for me overall. I'm still trying to figure out, even though it's been six months since I have officially left my job, I'm still trying to figure out how much is enough work and how much is not. I have been measuring my work in terms of output, like how many posts did I put out? How many videos did I put out in a week? But still sometimes if I'm not working like an eight hour day, I feel super guilty. But other days I work like 12 hours and I'm exhausted. It's definitely a balance to figure out. I'm trying to find more books on it as well just to read it up. I feel pretty old that this is how I spend my Friday nights now with friends playing tennis for two hours from seven to nine. I'm gonna go home, take a shower and relax on the couch being horizontal with my partner and my cat. Mm -hmm. 